Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesdays with TFE, our show number 119 for the 23rd of October, 2018. we got a full packed show today for you. Thank you very much for joining us. We, of course, have our coordinating producer here as usual, Julia Vedekin. Welcome to you. We even have a close-up shot of you today, as well as our uh, over-the-shoulder shot. Welcome to everybody. Let's get this turkey on the road, as they say. Um, we've got, as I said, quite an interesting show, I think, for you today. We will be talking about uh, the SSL, the Star Sailors League Nations Gold Cup that was announced this morning in Lorient, France at the Yacht Racing Forum. We'll uh, tell you who won the line honors late last night and early this morning in the Rolex Middle Sea Race. No surprise there, but uh, interesting nonetheless. The Mirabad Photo of the Year. Now, I think this is their ninth year they've been doing this. It's an interesting competition. We're going to test you, our readers, our viewers, to see if you can judge the best photo as well. And then we'll also talk about uh, briefly about the Bristol Yacht Club fire and a couple other things of note as we get into today's uh, news Yacht Racing News and Views here on Sailing Illustrated's bi-weekly. We now do this twice a week. We do a show here on Tuesdays, and of course we do TGIF with TFE on Friday. Same time, same channel. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Julia, has uh, we, got, we got a new setup here. I think it's all working. We tested it extensively yesterday, and hopefully it will continue to work as we move forward today uh today's bravo zulu we want to jump right into this nation's cup this is a big deal and it was announced as i said this morning in lorient at the yacht racing forum the star sailors league nations gold cup well, the star sailors league has been around since 2019 or sorry 2013 i think it has been and they have been sailing in the starboats in a competition that ends up in Nassau every December. And we wrote quite, here, I'm going to go to the story, actually. I wrote quite a story about it on the website. I can find it here. I thought I had it up here. I guess I don't. But uh, quite a good story about the Star Sailors League last December and how close that competition was and is. And now they're taking it to the next level. This will be a biennial Star Sailors League Nations Gold Cup to test, to decide, to determine who is the best sailing nation in the world, or so they said today. The way it will work is to have 40 teams from 40 nations, and they all have to be nationals of the nation they represent, 10 sailors per team for a total of 400 sailors on supplied 40-foot boats. And if you look at this chart, you'll see that there's three rounds robin. Let me come back out here to um, us. You'll see there's rounds robin one for all 40 teams, rounds two and three. And some of the teams will get buys into round robin three. The top, the better teams that will be ranked, and the Star Sailors League will choose which countries will get further into the competition. And in these rounds robin, they will race off two uh, Two boats will advance from each of these four boat flights. I guess I call them flights for now. But there's only four boats in each flight. And as you get down to the quarterfinals here, in this column, you get some teams, also teams one through eight get seated into that. And there are four four boat quarterfinals. And again, this is going to be one race to determine who goes forward. This isn't, after the round's robin, this isn't a big deal. This is one race, you get knocked out, and you go forward, as so they said today. Then the semifinals, two boats from each of these go forward to the semis. And in the semis, again, one race knockout, or so I'm told. And then from there, two boats from each of the semis go forward to the final, which is also a one-race knockout. Now, these races will be about... Um, 75 minutes so it's not these 20 minute sprints we've been seeing in the olympics and in the uh even the america's cup so this should be pretty interesting stuff 
And I think it's going to be cool. I think it's going to be very cool. Let's look some more at what's going on. This is the finals, the Star Sailing League finals last year in Nassau in December. The top, the top four boats, Goodison, Scheidt, Mendelblatt, and Rohart. And the top two of the four boats, the U.K. boat and the Brazilian boat, that Goodison won, and Scheidt, well, uh, you can see Goodison just nosed Scheidt by a meter in this final. And it was spectacular. It was close racing and spectacular. Just great stuff and this is the idea however not in star boats but in 40 foot boats with 10 crew all nationals of the country they represent one race four boat one final four boat race winner take all and there's a cash prize and so on but the goal is to, to this is obviously patterned after well you can imagine julie after world cup soccer right and the, the goal is to determine the best sailing nation every other year using this format and supplied identical 40-foot boats. It looks to me in a moment, I will tell you more about those. It looks like they're being built okay. in France. Who's supplying? Well, they didn't announce that, but I suspect it's going to be a French company, Beneteau, but we, we'll see. I don't yeah. know that for sure. Okay, so that's the format. 40, to, 40 is the key number. 40 teams, 40 from 40 countries, 10 sailors, so 400 sailors on 40, on 40 foot boats. I think it's cool. I think it's going to be great. Dennis Connor has been named as the SSL, the Star Sailing League Honorary President. Now, this is a photo from him receiving the New York Yacht Club medal at New York Yacht Club last, I think it was last December, last fall any event and look what dennis wrote here in this paper that he sent out this letter that he sent out with this announcement today he says dear all in the autumn of 2021 which is when this event will take place the first time and thereafter by annually every two years i will join the largest family of olympic medalists ever assembled in the same competition to award and celebrate the winners of the ssl nations gold cup so he goes on here, but here's, here's a couple key outtakes. He says, this is not a financial or technical challenge. And I think he's right. And then, of course, he also says, look down there in the second to last paragraph, which is something we've been saying here on Sailing Illustrated, especially with respect to world sailing and their ridiculous pursuit of other classes for olympic the olympics rather than going where the sailors are like the star class like the fin class they go and try to make a new class up out of whole cloth and it rarely ever works and this is why and dennis has hit the nail on the head as i already said i think it's people who built and made classes great exclamation point i think the analysis is true about ssl too it's the people who compete in the SSL events that really makes the concept great. Now, again, bear in mind, this is not a world sailing event. World sailing could never dream something like this up, let alone execute it. It takes a class. It takes, you're smiling. You're looking over yeah, at I, me I, I saying, there he goes again. Huh? Huh? Come on. I believe. I okay. believe. <laughs> so this is great. This is the sailors taking control of their sport, doing what they think is cool, and, and it will be cool. And I'm, I'm just, needless to say, delighted, as you can tell. This is the announcement being made by the, this, this morning in Lorient, France, where the Yacht Racing Forum, which is an annual gathering that's been going on for nine years of, of uh, commercial movers and shakers and organizers in the sport, Matthias Kuznirowicz, who's from Poland and a great star sailor, fin sailor, and so on, is listed as the spokesman for the Star Sailors League, the, the so-called Nations Gold Cup. I think it'll be shortened to Gold Cup. And look at the people who are involved already. You know these names. I mean, Grail and Loof and Pantella and Scott and Percy and Scheidt and Rohart and Burton and Kayard. Mateus, you know, there's some first names, some last names, but these are the stars of the star class of the Olympics, of the Finn class, even of the America's Cup and the, to some extent in the Volvo round the world race. This is great stuff. And they're going to do a terrific job. That is the star class, which is, which is 
a star and a class, a great class, in every respect. It's the yacht racing stars and yacht racing class and style and dignity and grace that's coming to fruition here. After trying it, this is not brand new stuff. They've been working on this in the so-called Star Sailors League, which has been a series of events in the star class over the last X many years. I, I think since 13, I think five years. And they'll be doing it again in Nassau in December in the star boats. But come 2021, it'll be 40 teams from 40 countries in 40-foot boats, total of 400 sailors, 10 sailors per team. Cool stuff. Now, the guy backing it, is Michel Niklaus, Michel Niklaus from Switza, from Switzerland, who is the SSL founder owner, very low key. You don't hear or see much about him in the sailing news, even in the Star Sailing League, but he is a wealthy, obviously, wealthy Swiss banker financier, and he has been backing the NSR Star Sailor, and he's been backing the SSL now for some time. Now, here is more about their plan as far as distribution of teams. They've broken the world into three zones, and here I'll just refer to them by color. The green zone is obviously North America, South America, and Africa. The blue zone is greater Europe, and the orange zone is Asia and Oceania. And they've, they've called uh, the blue zone zone a for america africa they've called the green zone e for europe and the orange zone a for or oh i guess for oceania asia okay but the point is that from these three areas at least to start with they are, will select 20 teams from asia uh from europe rather than the blue zone and that you know i think that makes sense because there's a lot of countries and a lot of active racing going on in the blue zone in europe then they will select 10 teams from countries in the green area and likewise 10 from countries in the orange area in Asia, Australia, New Zealand, and, and the Pacific Islands. I think it makes a lot of sense. 40 teams having a World Cup style, meaning World Cup of Soccer style event in starting in 2021 and thereafter every two years. Here's the boat. This is the concept that they put out today that is a supplied 40-foot non-foiling. And they made the point that it's a non-foiling monohull. Now, they, they chose a French boat. They've got the French national sporting symbol on there. And I suspect this will be a Beneteau something, but it, we'll see. They did not announce that. In fact, they were rather cryptic about, about not announcing it, although they did make the point it would be non-foiling and the boats would be supplied, and that it would not cost a team $5 million, quote-unquote, to enter. So they took, they took a direct hit, Julia, <laughs> at the America's <laughs> Cup and, 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 well, and, and Russell and Larry's league, right? Right. right. Okay, so it's, it's interesting stuff, cool stuff. Now, they also announced that they have a headquarters now in Switzerland, and that headquarters is, quote-unquote, on a lake in Switzerland. They didn't say where. I rather suspect this is the gentleman, uh, the owner, organizer, founder of the league. It's his chateau, or it's not really a chateau. I guess it's a manor on a lake. And they, they didn't identify the lake. And they said that teams will train here, that they'll put these 40-foot boats there and invite teams in to train there at their SSL headquarters Super. on a lake in Switzerland. So they've really thought this thing through. And between, they're already taking, uh, starting November 1st, they will be taking uh, expressions of interest for team uh, captains, for sailors, for media, for sponsors, and so on. And they've given themselves plenty of lead time. So this isn't until 2021, which in the fall of 2021. And the first event will be in Europe, Western Europe. And of course, that's after the America's Cup. And we'll see who gets the big, yeah. the big bite of attention. It's also competing with the Volvo because the next Volvo is going to be starting in the fall of 2021. So 2021 is shaping up, needless to say, to be a big year in the sport. Okay, so that's the nation's gold cup. I will say this. You can quote me. I think this is, as you can tell from my enthusiasm, I think this is great news for yacht racing. And I go on to say 
that this is returning world sailing to the sailors. This is a gold cup that actually works, unlike the gold cup of Olympic classes that, or world cup, I guess they call it, that world sailing has tried to put together and frankly has failed. And U.S. Sailing has put a submission, and we'll talk about in a moment, that is, I think, a very wise submission with respect to that circuit of what World Sailing's tried to put on. This, on the other hand, is cool beans, as we used to say. Is that an expression? Is that to, does that date me? Yeah, it does. More than? Yes. It's cool. <laughs> and it's great for the sport. It's going to be great for the nations because it's got a strong nationality rule with a lot of nations competing, 10 sailors per team. So you could really say, I think, at the end of this event, if it goes as well as I think it will, you'll be able to say at the end of the event, whoever wins this is the best sailing nation in the sport, at least for that year. And in two years hence, they'll two years time, they'll do it again. Okay. Uh, What impact will that have on Larry and Russell's league? Sail GP? I don't think a lot initially. I think this is going to be a highly professional league in foiling catamarans that I think is also good for the sport. Only five events per year. It's going to be very expensive to manage to run, but only uh, teams of 15 and only four sailors on each boat. So we'll see. It's a different kettle of fish, so to speak. I think it's cool. I think it's good. Between these two events, the other circuits that exist, the GC32, the Extreme Sailing Series, the World Match Racing Championship, I think it's going to be tough times for those events because we'll still have the Volvo or whatever, the Fakauer, the fully crewed round the world race is going to be called. And we'll have, of course, the America's Cup and the Olympic classes, the Olympic yachting sailing regatta every four years. And these two events, I think, are going to fill out the calendar rather nicely. So I don't think it's going to have a big effect, big impact on either Russell and Larry's league, at least not initially, or on the Prada Cup and the America's Cup. And, of course, to win the America's Cup, not defend it, but to win it, you have to first win the Prada Cup. Isn't that a nice slide? Of course, that's Laurent Esquier, the CEO there, second from left, the CEO of the – challenge of record organization with the three skippers for the three teams that I've so far entered. And I've been asked all week, is it true there's another team? Is there another American team? Is there another Italian team? Is the Norwegian team getting it together? We can only hope. And and I've texted back and forth with Mike Buckley, who's leading the U.S. effort. I know the two clubs that he is talking to at length i still don't think they have the big bucks to do it but we'll see and uh, certainly hoping that there will be more than just these three america's cup teams that have so far entered as challengers plus of course the kiwis as a defender however if this is it these are super teams these are all ben ainsley and representing the royal yacht squadron and uh, the new york yacht club who has an american at least (laughs) Running, running the team, although Dean Barker is going to be steering. Terry Hutchinson is the skipper and executive director. And then Max Serena, who is now the longtime uh, sailing captain, really, for the efforts of Patrizio Bertelli in Prada Luna Rosa. And he is the skipper team leader for, well, Luna Rosa, sponsored by Prada. Prada is also sponsoring the Cup as the presenting sponsor overall for the America's Cup, and they're also sponsoring the Prada Cup, which is the Challenger Selection Series. No question, these three teams are super teams. They're well-funded, they're well-staffed, they're well-led, and we'll see. I think that's going to be a very interesting Defender Selection Series for the Prada Cup in January, February, and then the match starts March 6th for the America's Cup between the winner of the Prada Cup and then the Defender Emirates Team New Zealand, on March 6th of 2021, a full year of sailing, starting with the Cup, ending, it sounds like, with the Star Sailors League Nations Gold Cup. Cool, eh? What do you think? No, I think it's exciting. You do? I do. This is the first you heard of it. Did you read the post I put up this morning? Yes. Good. You're a good lady. My (laughs) coordinating producer, Julia Vedekin, who 
is always on top of the action here, helping us keep. But you made it sound more exciting though than in prison than out. Well, I'm excited about it, as you yeah. can tell. I yeah. think it's great for the sport, and hopefully it will be. They won't let me down, and we'll probably all help in, in whatever way we can. We shall see. Okay, let's stop there. We've got a lot of uh, comments, no doubt. Julie, where do you want to start? Um, well, one was uh, uh, the uh, Ivan Rigoff says, I will try to get Bulgarian and Polish teams in the regatta. Oh, our new our new viewer and friend, yeah. Ivan Grekov. Okay, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. I think there will be a lot of interest. I think Carrad will end up chairing or captaining the U.S. team. I just think it makes sense. He's been active in the SSL and the star class now forever. Uh, I don't think Dennis Conner will captain the team, but he could. I was asked this morning by one of you watching, a senior series person, why won't there be a runoff within a country? And you know what? I'm sure there will be ultimately, maybe not the first time around, but why not? Why wouldn't you have several teams from the U.S. competing to be the entrant in this new program? Joan Winston, hi, I'm out for a walk and a, li <laughs> a listen. Hi, Joan. And, of course, Jay Hanfield is on, Newport, Rhode Island, Julie and others, Mason Sheen, Andrew Pimentel. Andrew, will you get involved in this, Andrew? Top young, well, he's young, he's Younger than I am. Top sailor here in this country. Peter Jorgensen, Roger Lockhart. Hi, Roger. Hi to you. Alan McGarry. Certainly there'll be a Canadian team as one of the 10 from the Americas. Let's see. Let's think about who it'll be from the Americas. Canada, the U.S., Bermuda. There's three. Um, Brazil. Probably the U.S. Virgin Islands is a separate entity. Uh, under the U.S. under the World Sailing MNAs, it's a member of national authority. Mexico, Argentina, Argentina certainly. Uh, who else am I missing in this hemisphere? Certainly, uh, South Africa will have a team, and I'm not sure who else in Africa would mount a team, but possibly. So there's there's a total of ten teams possible from the z Zone A, which is the Americas and Africa. Yeah. So you know, it's it's easy to imagine. Mm -hmm teams from all, all those countries and, yeah. and more. Uh, Europe's another issue. There are, you know, they're going to allow 20 countries from Europe, and there are, I think, 40 MNAs in Europe. So that, you know, it'll be tough. Bulgaria has a good sailing, and even Croatia, Croatia, mm -hmm. which has done well in the Olympics of late. So who knows? Okay, so Ivan Grekov, who lives in Chicago, Bulgarian gentleman, uh, become a regular viewer. Hi, Ivan, and he says he wants to get in. And, yeah, this is similar to other, some other international yacht club challenges, but I, I think they've taken the best ideas from a lot of different events, including some things I was working on. And not that we have any, um, you know, patent or, you know, any claim on any of that. It's common sense in many cases, many respects. Ali Dinas, I'm so hoping the World Match Racing Tour makes a comeback. Well, I, 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 the, this may actually, Ali, may help the World Match Racing Tour because this other – stuff is not match racing the the america's cup obviously is but uh this may help the world match racing tour in some respects certainly the congressional cup and some of the other major events the gold cup in bermuda will remain and i think it's cool it's a cool development fernando costello hello julian tom from san carlos that's just south of us here C clark chapin go for the bonus points julia what's that mean i don't know clark what does that mean brian riser Oklahoma, he's our friend out at the Oklahoma City Boat Club, I believe. We can't hear JW. We'll turn up your hearing aid, Dick Anderson. I Hopefully, talk some more, Julian. Let me just check the levels here. We're just checking. Well, you use your mic buried in your scar? Oh, no, it's too it's, far. It's out. Okay, it's a little far from your mouth. Thanks, okay. thanks, Richard. Richard Pfaff says, hello. Jay Hanfield, hope they mandate two non-Cat 3 sailors. Uh, that's an interesting question. They've said nothing about... What the um, cat one? Well, there's no cat two anymore, but cat one and three, the am pro am requirements will be. I suspect it will be wide open for the ten sailors. In other words, send your best, whether they're cat one or three, whether they're Corinthian slash amateur or pro. But we shall see. Uh, Jay Hanfield, hope they mandate. We said that we need some amateur blood on the boats. It builds up more of a fan base when you have local amateurs. Okay, well, how about women? Should there be a requirement that a woman be on the boat? 
What do you think, Julia? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But they should always be included in the in the in the hunt. Well, why wouldn't you require at least one woman and maybe one junior? Meaning under tell me what, college age, yeah, twenty three, twenty one? So we'll see. It's all interesting stuff. These are it's a smart group of people because they're sailors, lifelong sailors in most cases. They've been racing in the star class, the fin class, and other classes all around the world, the Olympics, the America's Cup, the the, the Volvo Whitbread around the world race. It's not being dictated from the top down by world sailing from a CEO who is a rugby guy who doesn't know his you-know-what from his ankle about sailing, or he didn't. So this is bottom-up, ground-up. This is the way the sport has always been run. This is what makes our sport great, and I'm, I'm delighted to see it as much for that reason as everything else that's being talked about here. Uh, Anders Helgeson, yes, what happened to WMRT? Is it dead? I don't know the status of the World Match Racing Tour. Anders, uh, maybe Ali Nas can, Ali D. Nas can uh, comment more on that. Uh, there is still such a circuit. There are a series of events around the world, including, as I mentioned, Congressional Cup. And there's a, in fact, we may have a show, we may have a segment on our Friday show from the Harkin, the Youth Match Racing Championship down in, I guess it's in New Zealand. I can't remember if it's Aussie or New Zealand, but there's down under now. Yeah. This time of year, their summer, they have some top-notch youth match racing events, not unlike the Governor's Cup that we have at Balboa Yacht Club. Um, Ali Dinas is saying, WMRT, I think Marstron took over. That's the GC32 crowd. Didn't get the instant love for the, the boats that they'd hoped, meaning the catamarans, and dumped their sponsorship and no one else has picked it up. I believe it suffers from lack of a sponsorship organizer, but I may be wrong. This is Ali Dinas, who won a match racing event at, I guess, at Oak Cliff yeah. fairly recently. Yeah. And she's a top now. She was a bow chick and a, and a great uh, sailor and, and, and keen, passionate sailor who's moved to the back of the boat now and is driving. Congrats to you. Okay, I think that's that level of comment. Let's move forward. Unless there's anything else, we'll come back to it if you want to. But our next story is about the Royal Malta Yacht Club, who have just run the. Can we come back to it? Well, the lake is is uh, Montreux. Montreux. Lac, Lac Lemon. Well, that's that's Lake Geneva. Okay, we'll come back. Some somebody has some insight on where that that headquarters is. Uh, in any event, this is. The Royal Malta Yacht Club, we have regular viewers, Georges, uh, uh, what, what's the gentleman's name? Georges, who's I think the vice commodore at the Yacht Club, du, du, uh, from Malta. Oh, yeah. D yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name or can't remember all of it. But if he's watching, welcome to you, of course. And the race just finished, the Middle Sea Race, which is a 600 nautical mile race. I mean, that's the, that's the length of the race to Bermuda. It's the length of the race to... Uh, to uh, Sydney, that's the Sydney Hobart length. So they run this every year, and they've been running it since 1968, and this was the 50th anniversary, not the 50th race, because it, it was biennial for a while, and they've missed some years, but I think it's the 38th race. But suffice to say that Maserati has won this, was first to finish in the multi-hull class, which is you know, it's not a surprise. They crossed the finish line of the uh, Rolex Middle Sea Race last night at 2254 local CEST, Central Europe Standard Time, in an elapsed time of two days, 11 hours, 54 minutes, and some change. The Maserati crew, of course, Giovanni Soldini is the leader of that, Guido Braghi, Carlos Hernandez or, or, or Carlos Hernandez Robania Robania and so on but uh, Giovanni Soldini is the master of that yacht and the leader of that team congrats to them for winning the multi hull line honors finishing last night not in a record time uh, it wasn't a particularly windy race but they finished late last night last evening Monday evening Europe time congrats to them and then for the I think the fourth time in a row I think for the fourth time in a row, the monohull line honors went to George David of the New York Yacht Club in Rambler 88, and they crossed the finish line this morning at 
07, so almost uh, just shortly after 2 a.m. Central Europe time on Tuesday the 23rd, George David, Brad Butterworth, of course, a perennial tactician on that boat, Silvio Aravani, Arabani, Arriva Baney, uh, Rodney Ardern, Will McCarthy, Dean Phipps, Stuart. This reads like a, a Kiwi, you know, this is Rome Kirby was on the boat, the head of the U.S. team that for Russell and Larry's new league, Sail GP. Simon Dobney, Peter Van Niekirk, Niekirk uh, and uh, Curtis Blewett, and on down the list, but very well sailed boat. Congrats to them. The fourth time in a row that George David of the New York Yacht Club with his Rambler 88 has won line honors in the Rolex Middle Sea Race. Congrats to them. And, of course, they got their Rolex, the Rolexes, George David and Giovanni Soldini for being first finish. Line honors in their two respective classes. Okay, let's turn the page here and go to this next topic, which is the Mirabad Yacht Racing Image Annual Competition. And the winner... Actually, they have several uh, categories of winners, but the winner was announced this morning also at the Yacht Racing Forum because they're co-sponsors of this. So the 2018 winners were announced today. Now, what is this about, you ask? Well, it's 109 photographers this year representing 25 countries took part in what is the ninth edition of this competition. The photos are submitted of course, of great quality, and they are, illustrate the 2018 sailing season and highlight the extraordinary diversity of the sport. So I thought we would have a little competition ourselves and see which of these photos you like best. So get your paper and pencil ready, and I'm going to switch through what are the top 10 photos. I'm giving them just letters. Julia's got to get her paper and pencil ready. So I, I'm not going to tell you where they're from, who took them. They're in random order, but these are the top 10 as voted by the people at the Yacht Racing Forum and some media and others for this year's Mirabad. Now, here is photo A, finalist A, and tell me which one. I'll, I'm going to run through them a couple, three times so you can compare and contrast and see which ones you like best. Do you like A or not? And then you can go do it again. And when I run through the second time, you can see if, Maybe one of these is better or not. There's photo B, finalist B. I love that one. I, uh, I, I, I think that's obviously from the Volvo, Dong Fong. C. Not bad. This is a 29er training. That's on the boat's on. It's an aerial shot. That boat's on its side. It's a little hard to see here, perhaps. That's D. That 29er shot is finalist D. Another great shot taken from, obviously, the Volvo from below the um, OBR, the onboard reporter, apparently taking that in challenging condition. That's finalist E, photo E. Here's a great shot, black and white. You know what kind of boat that is, Julia? It's a J-boat. Is it? Yeah. It's round for David. Yeah, it is. It's a big, beautiful black sails, the dark blue hull, I think. Finalist F, if you like that J boat photo. Here's one that people who shoot the Golden Gate Bridge from the front deck of the St. Francis Yacht Club will like. Everybody likes sunsets. This is finalist G. This was um, during the Volvo race also. Sun Hung Kai Scallywag, actually. Man up on the spreader, see that? And a. Uh, you see the, uh, let me see if I can back that up. You see the, uh, also the bird? Right. Uh, petrel, what, I don't know what kind of bird that is, do you? Who knows? It's it's in European waters, I'll tell you that much. Finalist G. Okay, a couple more here. H, soft focus, beautiful water in the foreground. Brunel, obviously from the Volvo. Finalist H. Finalist I. Now that's a drone shot. Of Brunel, remember that shot. I remember we ran that shot here during the Volvo on one of our shows. Drone shot, and they managed the, because the drone is now behind them and downwind. They they can get the drone back to the boat, presumably. Obviously, uh, I guess it's obvious they did. Although they could have, you know, they could have had a Wi-Fi. It could have had to, some kind of a connection, a radio connection to the drone. Not likely. And here is finalist J. Mm. 
Okay. Those times. So here, we'll go through them again, and you compare. I'm going to go through them quickly this time, so you can, I'm sure you've picked out a couple of your favorites, and see which one you like best. A, B, C. You can see the two kids on the, on the, dagger, on the dagger board, on the center board. Oh, that's great, isn't it? I don't want to bias anybody. It's not necessarily my favorite, but F, G, and if you know who won, if you've seen the press release or been following this, don't don't give it away, please. See what our viewers think. H, I, I, everybody likes I. I, I like I too, and whether it's my favorite or not, let's see. Or your favorite. And J. Okay, one more time through quickly. One more time. Dot. You decide if you're down to two photos, there's A, B, C. Julia likes that one. I don't. Oh, you don't? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I like it, but it's not my favorite. But. And J. Okay. So which one do you like best? Julia, everybody's putting, com put in the comments, please, which one you like best for the Mirabad Yacht Racing Image of the Year 2018. They also do a video, so it'll be interesting to see what video. Julie, do you have a favorite? Uh -huh. Which one? Um, C. C. Okay. I'm going to have to go backwards and see what they are, which one is the winner. Uh, who else? Who else has got an idea which one they like best? Uh, we have I guess there's two ways of doing it. You could also predict who you think the people chose as the best one. That would probably be interesting, too. A lot of people on here. So let's see. We've got um, Ted Ryman says B without a doubt. I, I'm sure a lot of people like B. I agree. I think Chris Sheldon likes F. Dick Anderson, who is a photographer and videographer of considerable repute, likes B, D, and F. Paul Homchick, B. There's a lot of Bs. A lot of people like B. I don't know if it's because it was early in the mix or if it's particularly good. Chris Sheldon says C. Trev Walker says F. Summer Green likes B and E. Clark Chapin likes A, B, and F because I'm a sucker for black and white for being dubbed. Um, Fernanda Castello, Castello, Castello says G. And Scott Davis says B and E. So Jay Hanfield, Rick Hayes, eight, a lot of other people watching. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Baton Rouge is, I mean, who's in Baton Rouge? Likes D and F, favoring D. Justin Palm, Nuno Barreto, Clark Chapin. I'm seeing a lot of votes for B. Yeah, I, I obviously, let me see if I, if, I'll probably screw this up, but if there's a way I can go back here and look at B easily. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Okay, I guess I can. We'll go back out. We'll have one more look and see who everybody liked. There was A. And B, yeah, I think a lot of people like B. I like B, too. Yeah, B is really good. Was that your favorite, Julia? Uh, I th think it was C, but look, look. There's B. Okay, I think B is probably the winner of our group. Yeah. C, was that the one you like, that trimaran? Yeah. Big try? Yeah. I like this wonderful. shot just because I'm a, you know, I like junior sailing and I like small boats and how to, how they positioned that i'm sure it was i didn't crop by the way i didn't adjust these pictures at all i just took them right off the website and off the the promo email we got this morning all the media got this was i can tell you this which is e this was one of the higher up shots in fact i can tell you i think this was second place in the competition by the judges who say they know these things and f that's f that's f the J boat shot. Was that, you like that one? You didn't like that no, one. I don't know. Clark Chapin liked that because he's a sucker. Well, I can tell you that this is the winner. Finalist G, the sunset shot. Let me take that away. Yeah, that was the winner. That's the one that most people like. 
And that's, I think, from leg one of the Volvo, from Spain out and around to Portugal. And this one, did anyone like this one? H, not too many people like that one. I wasn't too fond. I like this one. This may have been my favorite I, just because of the drone and the wild, wet and wild conditions. There's a great sort of one minute video today posted on online of the Volvo. It's just every single second it was just crashing. But it was long, wasn't it? A minute. Oh, a minute? Uh, we'll, we'll grab that. Maybe we can grab that for Friday. Okay. Uh, so that's it. Here's the, the winner. If you can see this, Ricardo Pinto of Portugal took, that's him. This is Ricardo. And he was pronounced the winner this morning, at least. Uh, they, they had several other categories and different people selecting, but of the overall, the, the big deal. He was the winner, and that is his shot. Sun Hung Kai Scallywag, the Hong Kong entry in the Volvo Ocean Race on apparently leg one. I'll back that up so you can see the get the full effect. Leg one from uh, Alicante, Spain, out and around the one of the islands and back into Portugal. Nice shot, eh? Okay. So that's that segment. Congrats to Mr. Pinto Ricardo. I thought his name was Ricardo Pinto, but I looked it up, and I'm told it is Pinto Ricardo. And another Bravo Zulu. I, I just was impressed by these guys. This is uh, the winners of the Championship of Champions in the Y Flyer. I've got a soft spot in my heart. Some of you will know for this event. And this is uh, Rod Favela in front, crewing for Billy Drehheim. Bill is a Michigan boy, but he's a lives. He's long since relocated to Texas. He's a sailmaker, and a hell of a good sailor and a great guy. And the two of them won the championship of champions, running away. They, I think, their worst race in the twenty boat fleet was sixth. I think they threw out a sixth. They also had a fifth. That it was in the rest of the fin the rest of their finishes are first, second, and third. They just sailed a, an amazingly consistent series. Well done to Rod and Billy on winning the championship of champions. I also want to do a Bravo Zulu because this was not only this is a shame. This was Bristol Yacht Club who had a fire on Sunday at their clubhouse in Bristol, Rhode Island. Bristol is also the, as you, if you saw the post I did on the Facebook, it's or rather on the website. It's also the home of the Harrisoff uh, uh, Mar Marine Maritime Museum, Marine Museum, the Harrisoff Museum. It's also the headquarters now of U.S. Sailing that started out in New York and then to, have gradually moved north to Newport, Rhode Island, then to, uh, they were in Portsmouth, Rhode Island for, uh, for quite some years, and now they're up in Bristol, which is further up Narragansett Bay on the east side of Narragansett. A nice town. Uh, the America's Cup Hall of Fame is also at the Harrisoff Museum. And this is the local yacht club of record. Lars Guck, one of the great sailors from this country, is also from Bristol, as are a lot of others. Well, the Harrisoff family, the Harrisoff clan. And I was impressed by the Commodore. She issued a statement rather quickly and well thought out, I thought. Commodore Ruth Sauto, Suto. Suto, I guess, whom I don't know. I've not met, not had the pleasure, although I think we are now Facebook friends. And the Bristol Yacht Club says it will be closed. Apparently, somebody tossed a cigarette or some something into some mulch on the side of the club, and it burned the good side, one side of the club pretty well, and they're going to be closed for a while. But I love her quote. She says, we are more than a building. We are a community, meaning the Bristol Yacht Club. And didn't you like that, Julia? I, I mean, I just think that as much as anything says what we and this sport are all about. So full marks to Commodore Suto. I guess it's Suto after Sunday's fire at the Bristol Yacht Club. Hopefully they'll be back in business quickly. Annapolis Yacht Club is back in business. They're rebuilt and have had their, I believe, have had a soft opening. And um, not through a fire, but Newport Harbor Yacht Club out on this coast has had a soft opening of their new clubhouse, which they rebuilt as the club was slowly sinking into the peninsula down there in Newport Beach. And I've got an aerial shot of that new clubhouse, and it's stunning. I, I've been through it in the early days before it was framed and before it was all finished out. Maybe we'll do something from down there soon. Clubs, 
and classes. Don't forget it. Clubs and classes are at the heart of this sport. Without clubs and classes, we would be screwed with a capital F, frankly. It's, that's where the club, that's where the sport resides. That's where the sport should reside. That's why the Star Sailors League, that's why all of these. And it doesn't have to be a fancy yacht club. I grew up in a, basically virtually a paper yacht club. We had great racing, great social, we had a lot of fun. Didn't really even have a clubhouse. Uh, Clark Chapin, who's watching, is the Commodore of that club now. Now we have a, a, a ostensible clubhouse, but it's still really an organization of people who live on the lake, who come and come to the club, as and both. And it's like a lot of the clubs. It's it's about sailing and social, and it's the heart and soul of our sport. Okay. Unlike world sailing, which is not the heart and soul of our sport, they're trying to be, and there is a increasingly strong opposition to this top-down management style by the CEO, the non-sailing CEO, Andy Hunt. And the Sarasota meeting is coming up here in a week. It's uh, the week after next, and it goes into November. And there is growing opposition from sailors, from MNAs, from class associations. And just this morning, before we went to air, I had a call from one of the senior serious people in the sport, whose name I will not mention, but if I did, everyone on here would know the name and would know, know, probably know half of you on here would know the person, would have met the person. This is not Paul Henderson or a Bill Canfield or any of the other people, Gus Miller, who have been loud and clear about how they feel. This is another senior serious industry person calling to ask me if I was going to, to uh, Sarasota. Still haven't decided, have we, Julie, on that, whether we're going to go to Sarasota. I would try, try to drag Julie along because we'd have to do it. Right, Julia? Right. Because huh? right. we have to do some shows from down there, and I can't do them by myself. So that's forget about all that. The Sarasota meeting is a pinnacle because the, the organization does have financial problems. They're trying to say, well, we're getting some money from you watch. They're going to say we're getting money from sale GP from Russell and Larry. We're getting money from this SSL. We're going to get some money from the America's cup. Those aren't sponsorships. Those are sanctioning fees. And in return for that, they provide officials and do some other things. So don't let that confuse you. They are, they are in, dire straits financially by all accounts. So that's what's going on in the world sailing world. If it worse than that, a couple of days ago, they put out this new table of organization, Andy Hunt, the CEO, Julia, you haven't seen this. They put out this big PDF table of organization and it has, it is so top heavy. It has so many people and look at this chart You've got director of events, and they're putting on events they shouldn't be putting on. This World Cup of, of Olympic classes is a madness, and it doesn't work. And the sailors are complaining, the classes are complaining, and it's financially a debacle, the Sailing World Cup. Now, okay, the, what else do they have to put on? You know, okay, they put on a women's championship. They put on a youth match racing. They don't need to put on a youth match racing championship. Clubs all over the world put on excellent youth match racing championships, starting with Balboa Yacht Club down in Newport Beach and the Harkin coming up in, I think it's in New Zealand this weekend. I'm not sure if it's in Aussie or in, in Oz or in New Zealand. But clubs and classes should be putting on events like the Star Sailors League, not World Sailing. They should support the events put on by clubs and classes. Help with officials, help with rules, help, you know, where they can. Measurement and technical uh, overall, not, not going and doing it. The clubs and classes are fully capable of doing that. Offshore rules, yeah, okay, coordinate offshore rules and racing rules. That's about all they should be doing, not trying to become FIFA, which is corrupt, as everyone knows, or the IOC, which a lot of people suspect is corrupt. And that's what this group is trying to do. Now, the next category, their director of integrity and government, this is a staff guy who is a lawyer who's just been promoted to this new position, and he oversees all this governance and secretary, company secretary and race officials. He also appoints himself to juries. He was on the Volvo jury. This would be like the supervisor of officials of the NFL or the NHL also going and refereeing games. Who knows more? You can't, you can't do that. <laughs> no, I know. And if you're going to oversee the integrity and competence of the sport, you don't go do the judging yourself. 
because you know what what if you have a problem and I, I it's just nuts this organization and, and there I'm glad to see and hear that there's growing angst because I think something will happen in Sarasota I think the we'll talk about what should happen in a moment but then the other departments are all f- basically to to, to they're they're keeping this organization afloat. They're not providing services to sailors. Now, some of you will argue, well, you have to do marketing and you have to do communications. And, but there's lots of good media outlets. Why do they have to be in the media business? Why do they have to be providing a world sailing show? They're just pissing away millions of dollars a year to do what a lot of other people are already doing very well, whether it's the sailing anarchies or the scuttle. But you can argue with all of us or the sail worlds, or yachts and yachting, or the, all the Italian publications, or the French, in any event. Here's what should happen in Sarasota. The Olympic classes should stay the same. They should park the current 10 classes, forget about kiting. They brought kiting in two years ago and then came to their senses and said, not yet. By the way, they just had this kiting uh, gold cup world cup something in in down in sardinia in the southern tip of sardinia down in uh, colliery and you go read the protests and here are the protests the kites coming together crossing their wires people getting knocked in the water and then having po- uh, protests and requests for redress and the race committee worse than that has every time they come together and they cross their wires people get hurt race committee has to come rescue them even if they don't get hurt, because you can't relaunch the kite very easily. And I love kiting. Kiting is great. But the format, the style of racing, whether it's expression with jumps and, and uh, what do you call that, with judged competition, yeah. whether it's going to be uh, slalom racing, zooming down, only downwind, it takes time to sort this stuff out. And you don't just take something because you think it's cool and is going to help television and is going to grab the organization, one of these departments, going to grab them more money so they can hire more people and have fancier offices in London. Do I sound like Hannity on, oh, yes. on Fox News yes, or do, do I sound like you know Anderson Cooper on CNN? I don't mean to. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, you do. We've got to regain control of the sport. And our chance to do that is in Sarasota with Bill Canfield's uh, – submission which says put the council back in charge bill canfield from the u.s virgin islands visa virgin island sailing association a very fine submission and those of you watching talk to your leaders in your sport starting here in the u.s and in the uk and everywhere else tell them to support that bill canfield submission to return the power back to the council take it away from the ceo who is a rugby guy so Here's what should happen. They keep the Olympic classes the same for 2024. 2020 is done. Keep the classes the same. Give stability to the small countries who can't afford to go out and buy new fleets. Right now they're talking about changing seven of the ten classes. And you know the only three classes that aren't being changed under the current proposal are the NACRA, and the 49er and the 49er FX. And you know that the chair, the, the chairman, who, who I hope to get on this show, the chairman of the, of the classes committee within World Sailing is the executive secretary or managing director, whatever his title is, of those three classes. So he's protecting his own turf. You know, they've got some kind of a cozy deal, and they're going to change all the other classes because World Sailing wants to dominate and control and collect revenue from those classes and they can't unless they can dominate now they got they got antitrust problems with the eu too so leave it the same park the classes don't change them and then let cooler heads prevail have a think of this try to get kiting try to get them in the olympics with their own federation with surfing so they can do all their normal events that are that, that they like to do without having to take two of our medals away from yacht racing or sailing the other thing that should happen is, is the U.S. submission. The U.S. sailing has made a very, in my opinion, astute submission, which is to get rid of this World Cup of events. They've been trying to run this World Cup of, of, of Olympic classes. They gather the Olympic classes together at various places, count the points, and call somebody the World Cup 
winner for the year. That's not a world. That's somebody who's the winner in one of the Olympic classes. That these events have been poorly supported. They have been croutonic. They've been financially problematical. It's logistically a nightmare. What does work is the regatta like they had in Aarhus in August. I think it was August. And that's once every X many years bring all the Olympic classes together and have a combined world championship. That's been going on for a long time with success. And it's good for the classes. And what world what US Sailing's proposal is, is to put that in, have that combined world championship of the Olympic classes once every four years in the year preceding the Olympics. Now that's what we used to do. When I was involved as the head of the US delegation and I was on the jury for a couple of these events, and that's what the classes wanted to do. We did what the classes wanted to do because it makes sense. So that's what the U.S. submission is. We should support that, do away with this World Cup, go in there and have a combined world championship of the Olympic classes one year before the Olympics, and by the way, do it at the same venue where the Olympics will take place. That gives them a trial regatta. They don't have to run yet another regatta. Sailors don't have to run all over the freaking world. They can go to the Olympic venue, do that regatta, combined Olympic classes, world championship regatta, one year before the Olympics, get a taste for it, qualify who, which countries get to go. Julia's shaking her head yes, nodding her head. Yeah, you like that. Yeah. We do make some sense around here, don't we? Once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> I, hope so. I hope so. Thank you, Julia. Okay. I mean, as we say in this country, Julia's saying get off the topic. I will. Elections have consequences, and there's, there's going to be votes in Sarasota. Talk to your delegates. Get them going. Okay, enough of all that. Thank you for bearing with me. We will be tomorrow again. Oops, that's the wrong button, Julia. But you and I will be there yes. tomorrow at St. Francis Yacht Club for the Wednesday Yachting Live. Uh, we live stream that, the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon, yes. which is live. We live stream live on their Facebook page every Wednesday, 1230 Pacific, 1530 Eastern at the beautiful venue here on San Francisco Bay. We're happy to do it. We're getting a lot of uptake, thousands of views of not only our shows on Tuesday and Friday, but also this show on Wednesday it's a lot easier for Julie and myself because we're just pushing buttons and she's watching the comments and we're not having to gas bag and put the show together. Tomorrow's show, by the way, I think is quite good. Yeah. This is uh, Landon Steele and Tony Day, whom I've not met, but they, they're, fairly, they're both sailors and they're both cooks and they're both scientists. Apparently they're into the food science and they have started a company in the last couple of years, I think, called 30 Knot Gourmet, and it's a boat provisioning for racing and cruising company. It's a company that does boat provision. So I'm looking forward to this. A, people like food, and B, this is a challenge to do a nice job for provisioning of boats, keeping the crew happy. We do a pretty good job. Our owners do a great job on It's Okay, but it's cool. Land and Seal and Tony Day tomorrow at the Wednesday Yachting Luncheon at St. Francis Yacht Club. Uh, if you're in the Bay Area, you're always welcome. Sailors are welcome. It's a $20 lunch, buffet lunch. It's always nice. If you can't join it, join us there at the club. Watch it live, 1230 Pacific. Or you can see a replay on their Facebook page, same as you can see a replay of our shows here as soon as we're off the air, which is just about in, a few, in about a minute we'll be off the air. <laughs> We'll be back Friday, TGIF with TFE. Do we have any comments? Yeah. Oh, we do. Let's yeah. stop. Then Julie's got pressing comments here. Go ahead, Julia. Um, uh, Jay uh, Hanfield says Halloween's going to be rugby Andy's last full month. <laughs> we can only we can only hope, Jay. And, and and goes on to say, please go to Sarasota. We won't get the real deal from World Sailing. Please be our eyes and ears. Um. Sailing is a niche sport, and kiting is a subset set of wind-driven vehicle sports. How's that description, Tom? And Ben, is it Remarker? Remarker, yeah. Remarker. Is he on? Yeah, yeah. So, I got to get him on the show. He's the he's the managing director of those three classes that are not being changed. He just says such BS. Oh, okay. Well, tell us why, Ben. Come on the show. I keep inviting you on. 
you're welcome to come and tell your side of the story. And, and maybe not this Friday, but maybe this Friday, if you're available, why not? Let's, um, Julie, let me thumb through here. And Justin Paul, we mentioned Nuno Barreto, uh, Dick Loomis. Hi, Dick. Sangmeister, John is watching. Philip Friedman, I, I know John agrees with, he's running the Olympics in Long Beach, I think, in uh, come 2028 the LA Olympics, George Bonello Dupuy. There's our friend from Malta. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I couldn't get your name off the tip of my tongue. Charles Ward, Charles Ward raised the money for Dennis Connor's successful 87 America's cup or raised a lot of it. And he's now heavily involved in polo. He's often called the polo mayor of Santa Barbara up in your down in your neck of the woods. Dick Anderson says, I'm sure Ron appreciates the use of his fine book. So Anderson has noticed, look at this, I replaced those wooden blocks, which I thought were, you know, they're okay. But I've got uh, Ron Holland's book, All the Oceans, Designing by the Seat of My Pants, his memoir, and then we've got the late, great Jim Kilroy's book, Kealoa, because A, they're the right size, and B, they're nice and they're yachty. They're beautiful. Nice of you to notice that, Richard. Thank you. Richard Pfaff has been watching. Thank you. And Nuno Barreto says, it is Ricardo Pinto. See, I thought it was Ricardo Pinto too, but all of the information that came out this morning said Pinto Ricardo. And I, I'll go look at that again. Looking good, Charles Ward. Thank you, Charles. You are too. I haven't seen uh, you live in a while, but Peter Jorgensen, Clark Chapman, a good argument for having a tobacco-free campus, not just a no-smoking building. Yeah, I saw Clark's comment. Uh, yeah, you don't want people going outside the clubhouse and tossing their cigarette into the mulch and burning down the clubhouse. That's not a good... Gary Salvo. Hi, Gary. Former race committee chairman at Golden Gate Yacht Club. Great guy. Has done more for more people very quietly, very unass unassumingly. Gary Salvo, good guy. Philip Friedman, Portage Lake Yacht Club is gorgeous. Portage, it's called Portage Yacht Club. There's, there's a lot of Portage Lakes because that's the Indians would go up and then they would portage their canoes to the next river or lake, yeah. so... There were a lot of lakes named Portage because that's where the Native Americans um, did their portaging. I, I wonder if that included Elizabeth Warren, if she ever portaged a canoe. I'm sure she did. I couldn't help putting, I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't help. A little, little. Shame on you. Um, and I'm just going to repeat Jay Hanfield's comment. Halloween is going to be rugby Andy's last full month at the helm. If he isn't sent packing, something is wrong. I hope, Jay Hanfield, you're right. Felix Jakobson. Andrew Warner, Richard Gladwell. Hi, Richard. Richard's been writing some great stuff as usual, especially on this world sailing thing, but he covers the sport in detail. More and better than just really than anybody else, I think it's fair to say. Jay Hanfield says, sailing is a niche sport and kiting is a subset niche of wind-driven vehicle sports. How's that description, <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Pretty good, Jay. we got to get Jay on the show. Yeah. Ben Remacher says, such BS, fake news, I am that person. Ben, you're, I'd love to have you on the show, but face it, your three classes, and you're chairman of that, of that classes committee, a paid member, a paid, uh, I'm, not, I'm not quarreling with that. I'm, I'm glad to have professionals in the sport. And you live in Vancouver, you're Canadian, and do a fine job of those classes from everything I hear. Uh, but a paid director of the class who's chairing the classes committee, who ends up with his three classes not being changed and the others are all being changed, or the, the events being modified. It's not BS. It's not fake news. Come on and, and let's have a discussion. We don't have to have a debate, but you're, you're welcome. I'd love to hear your point of view, Ben, anytime. This Friday, if you want. Uh, Michelle Friel uh, Almeida. Hello, Michelle. Sending us great pictures. Q, Quentin Strauss from the UK. Bill Wingrove from down in Tampa, Florida. Feel, feel free. You're talking crazy here. <laughs> Good. Thanks, Philip. Bill Wingrove, late to the show. Where are we meeting in Sarasota with the Spears <laughs> torches? Well, come on, we're going to be civil. We're going to we're going to be civil, and we're going to. Um, everybody's got to put their views forward, and we got to have an honest and civil discussion. Hi, Mom. Janice Davis, Dick Anderson, pot her up, please. He's saying pot you up, Julia. I think your microphone's down. Look, your microphone's way down in your. That's the problem. Your microphone is down there in the bloody bowels of your uh all right, i won't all say right. it it's your your there you go see that's when you get your that beautiful what is that scarf that's really nice it's a nice finish scarf huh it's a nice finish scarf now, see nice. now that we get your microphone up by your mouth richard can and everyone else can hear you oh, okay okay marcus feinstein charles ward love your work with polo get into yachting question mark 
That's interesting. Charles knows Charles. Marcos must know Charles Ward. Justin Palm, can you do a World Sailing Update show after the meeting? Yeah, we will. Don't worry. Isn't it here in Portage Yacht Club? Yes, Justin, it used to be here in Portage Yacht Club because of the so many Portage uh, lakes in and around the Midwest, particularly in Michigan. I think there are nine in Michigan. Uh, when the club was founded in 1953, they used Heron because its side saddle, Portage Lake, is with that Portage Lake, our Portage Lake, with the Heron River. But it's the Heron was dropped some years ago. It's just now Portage Yacht Club. Clark Chapin, uh, replying to Philip, MSPYC.com. Long story, but not anymore. Yeah, okay. I just told you the long story, I think, Justin. Julia? Uh, Margarita. Uh, Martini, again, yeah. Uh, about... Uh, America's Cup 21, but you did answer that earlier. Yeah, I I think, Margarita, I don't think that this new Star Sailing League is going to have, I, I think when, this, when, when there are good events, and Laurent Esquier said this, good events bring attention to the sport, and I think it's good for the sport, good for the, it'll be good for the Cup, it'll be good for, I think, Russell's League and, and vice versa. Okay, enough of all this. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back on Friday with TGIF with TFE, and we hope you will join us then. Julie, you'll be back on Friday. I will. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, if there's any, if something pops up, and Ben Remacher, if you want to come on Friday, ping me right after the show, and let's get that teed up. And in the meantime, we hope everyone will sail fast, sail safe, and have fun. See you Friday. Ciao.